Hello everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to another video of my channel. I'm Kishan. I hope you all are doing well. Uh, so from the thumbnail, I hope you get to know about the topic of today's video. So this video is about ISRO. And this video is about something that is a concern about ISRO. And the discussion that I'll be doing in this video is based on one of the recent uh, interviews that ISRO Director Mr. Somnath has given. So a couple of months back, um, ISRO Director Mr. Somnath has given an interview and there uh, he has revealed uh, shocking data or shocking statistics about ISRO that less than 1% of IIT earns are working with ISRO. And in that interview, we said that, you know, though our country is producing quite a huge number of IIT earns every year in the bachelor level, master's level and PhD level, but these IIT graduates, they are not willing to work uh, for ISRO. And the reason that he has mentioned in that particular interview is that, you know, ISRO is not able to provide enough salary to the student. And because of ISRO's, uh, you know, low or average pay structure, uh, people are not interested to join ISRO. And even they join after a few years, they leave ISRO. And that's that's why currently even less than 1% of uh, IITMs are working with ISRO. So whatever exactly he has said, I'll just quote him. So uh, he said, our best talents are supposed to be engineers. And they are supposed to be IITs, but they are not joining ISRO. Uh, if we go and try to recruit them from IIT, no one joins. Few people who think uh, space is important, uh, such people joins, but not many. And percentage is hardly less than one percent or even lower. So it's a it's a really you know frustrating or disappointing things for ISRO that IITs are not joining ISRO and they are not working with ISRO. Because as Mr. Somnath has mentioned, IITs are the best minds of our country. But the reason that he has mentioned that, you know, because of low salary structure, people are not joining ISRO. Is it the only reason because of which, you know, IITs are not joining ISRO? So that I'm going to discuss in this particular uh, video that uh, isn't just the salary or there are some other reasons also because of that IITs are not joining or not willing to join ISRO. Uh, I'll be, I'll be, you know, discussing from my personal experiences this whole whole thing. So if you like this topic and if you want to know in detail about it, please stay tuned to this video till end. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and share this video to other people also. And if you are new to this particular channel, please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that when I upload a new video, you will get a notification. Without any delay, let's get started into today's video. Now, obviously, money is important uh, for many students and many people in our society in our country um, because you know uh, even though ISRO is providing or ISRO is giving uh, a decent amount of salary nowadays to his engineers and scientists but the gap with the private industry is huge for example if I take the salary structure of an entry-level scientist or engineer that is the SC level scientist engineer in ISRO that will be like roughly 80,000 or 85,000 per month that means around 10 lakhs per annum so if you convert it to a annual salary on the other hand, whenever an IIT graduate will be appear for a on-campus or off-campus placement to any, you know, private company like corporate uh, consultancies, banking sector, product-based companies, or suppose the PhD student if they go for any research lab. So they will be earning much more salary. I mean, that gap you can't uh, even compare because private sector will be giving you two to three times or more than that uh, salary what, uh, than what ISRO is providing you. So the gap is there and, you know, it's quite natural in our society that there will be many students who will be influenced by this money factor, will be influenced by this, uh, you know, salary factor. And I believe that 50 to 60 percent students will be influenced by this factor that, you know, the salary structure of ISRO is not that good uh, compared to what is being provided by the private companies. So here I'll be quoting uh, another part of Mr. Somnath's interview. He has revealed that what is their experiences when they go for uh, recruitment in, in different IITs. Uh, so he mentioned that, you know, when the team is to visit uh, different IITs for, for on-campus uh, placement, so one of the scenario he has mentioned in this interview that the team were presenting uh, to the student about the career opportunity and the type of work that they used to do in, inside ISRO. And then they presented the salary structure of the ISRO system. Uh, the students who were sitting in the room, uh, they saw the highest pay that he or she could, uh, could have get inside ISRO. And that was it. I mean, after seeing uh, that presentation, 60% of the people uh, walked out. I, I mean, that's quite natural. I mean, 50-60% um, of the student will not be willing to work uh, with, with the salary structure that ISRO is providing to its employee. 
So money is a factor that I understand. But my point is, apart from that, for this 40% students for which, uh, you know, 10 lakhs per annum is sufficient if you are giving them a good project, good, uh, you know, challenging task, why from them also 39% are not willing to join ISRO. So that is something I feel their money doesn't come into the picture. There is something else is there. That's why those 40% IITs even they are not willing to join ISRO or even that even they join ISRO, they eventually leaving ISRO and going for some private company. Now here the problem is the kind of work you have to do if you join ISRO as a scientist or engineer. The kind of work that you do inside ISRO is kind of development uh, development work. And you have to do same work repetitively in different mission. So after a few years, you will feel that you are doing the similar kind of work that, that you might feel a bit monotonous and boring for you because you are doing the similar work from mission to mission for year after year. So there is the main problem because, you know, whenever you are targeting to recruit an IITN, you have to provide them a challenging work because whenever these IITNs used to join different corporate companies, they are given some challenging task where they can use their whole experience that they have gained inside IIT or whatever skill set, different skill set that they have learned uh, through the rigorous coursework that they have done in IIT. So all of this experience skill set they is to use uh, while solving this challenging task. So for example, if you uh, if you if you look into any uh, corporate sector when they recruit BTEC students or MTech students, uh, they give them that kind of work what these people can solve. On the other hand, if a PhD student join a research lab, then they are given uh, some kind of research oriented work. So the exposure is there in private uh, sector, both in terms of technology development and research. But on the other hand, if you, if you, if you look into the kind of work a uh, student or an employee has to do inside this row, is kind of a uh, repetitive monotonous work that people used to do. So that's the main reason uh, even IITNs, you know, willing to join his role. And maybe initially they found that work is kind of interesting and challenging, but after a few years they might feel um, that, you know, it's kind of boring and motor, monotonous work that they are doing and eventually they left the organization and uh, joined the private sector. So that was possibly my reason also. I have, I have, I have made a separate video about it that why I left his role. Uh, so the link I'll be given in the description. So my reason also was there that you know, though it's an Indian space research organization, but I personally didn't find the research component there for computer science students. And and there are many other people also who joined with me. They also left after a few years and uh, they are now working on working for some uh, private companies. So that's the main problem. And also one more thing is there, that ISRO is an aerospace company, you know, as Mr. Swamlath has mentioned, that if for you uh, space is important, then uh, you must join ISRO. Obviously, you know, ISRO is for space. But in IIT, there are other disciplines also. Like, it's not only about aerospace or aero engineering. There are mechanical engineering, there are electronics engineering, computer science engineering. I personally feel uh, still for aerospace, there is a lot of exposure inside ISRO uh, to work on. But uh, for other other engineering branches like computer science, EC, electrical, for them, the exposure is even more limited. For them, you know, the research component or technology development that ISRO is doing, uh, there you might feel that you are not uh, able to use all of your skill set and tech technical capabilities that you have learned from your MTech or BTech days. Uh, for example, if I say, uh, if I take my example, you know, kind of AI machine learning work that I uh, feel that, uh, you know, people at IIT or IIC are doing or even in the private companies like Amazon, Google, Flipkart, these people are doing compared to that, you know, kind of exposure in AI machine learning for CSE people inside Israel is very, very limited. So that's the main problem. I mean, if you have to recruit IITNs, you have to come up with challenging, you know, challenging kind of work, both technology point of view and from the resource point of view, then, you know, people will be willing to join ISRO because I personally feel, as I was saying before, 50 to 60 percent student, they might have a knack or passion for earning money, but the rest 40 percent student for them, 10 lakhs per annum would be sufficient. But if you give them a challenging task, a challenging work, they will be willing to join ISRO and work for it. But the main problem is they are not getting those kind of work uh, because people are smart nowadays. You know, they know all of the things, the kind of work that is going on inside because nowadays it's very open. There are a lot of YouTube channels, a lot of YouTubers. They keep on talking about what's going on inside. Uh, people used to post in LinkedIn, Twitter. So people know everything. I mean, people are aware about everything. So that's why if you come up with some kind of challenging works, 
people from IIT also will be joining to uh, joining to ISRO. And I know there are research work going on in, in in ISRO also. But the thing is, you know, ISRO's research part is outsourced to IIT. Different IIT professors they used to collaborate and do the research part. But I feel if ISRO internal team also will be part of this kind of research work, then you know IITians and people from ISC also will be will be willing to join ISRO. And another issue is the location constraint. Uh, most of the ISRO centers are not in a good location, except Bangalore. All the other locations are are in a very remote remote place. Like you have a look, you have a center in in, in Trivandrum, you have a center in Mahindragiri. Uh, you you have a center in Hyderabad, but that's also not in proper Hyderabad. We have a center in Ahmedabad. So all of these locations are not good location except Bangalore. Though you know in Bangalore there is only the URST is in the proper Bangalore, but Strat Hassan they are in in a, in a bit out outclassed location. So uh, location is also on question because you know when a B.Tech guy or an M.Tech guy from IIT you know got offer letter from ISRO and another another company. They found that ISRO location is a bit, uh, you know, remote location and then the outskirts location. And they found that the private job they're getting in the core area of Bangalore, it's, it's you know, kind of an easy decision for them that they would go for and the private company because the location, you know, to help you also there. They will be in the boss area or the core area of Bangalore or maybe in the Hyderabad. So location constraint is also there. That also might be a parameter for many people to, to go away from ISRO and join a private company. So that is something ISRO can't help uh, because all of these locations they can't change because the offices are already there. That is nothing to do. But I feel that maybe ten to uh, five to ten percent stu student is to decide based on location. But apart from that, I think twenty to thirty percent students still willing to work for ISRO. But it's very disappointing that only one person is working with ISRO because of the uh, kind of works um, that they didn't find that much challenging. So I feel that ISRO need to think about it, um, that they need to improve or they need to found out something challenging for, for the for the people who is coming out from IIT and ISC and, and then I think many people I think in future will be joining ISRO. So yeah, that's my take on this particular topic and, and this is very shocking, shocking statistics that Mr. Somnath has revealed that less than 1% of ITMs are working for ISRO. I personally feel ISRO deserves more than that. But yeah, it's res ISRO's responsibility also. You know, they need to think about uh, to come up with something challenging uh, for these people because these are best minds of our country. So you have to give them a challenging work. Then only they will be satisfied and they will be staying with the organization for the longer time. So I feel ISRO leadership um, team also think about it. It's just not about the money. Not everyone is chasing money. There are a lot of people who who, who is looking for job satisfaction, who is looking for challenging work. Uh, for them, 10 lakhs per annum is still still a good amount of money. So I feel ISRO team will think about it and they will come up with something challenging uh, so that, you know, they, they they open many more opportunities for IITNs and then IITNs will be joining and will be, uh, and will be working for uh, space and technology development of our country. So let me know what is your thought on this particular topic. Let me know in the comment section. And if you have liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button and share this video to other people also. And if you are new to this particular channel and if you are interested in this kind of videos, you can go, go through my channel, uh, see the other videos that I used to make. And if you found that these videos are helpful for you, please subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that when I upload a new video, you will get a notification. That's it about this video. I will meet you in the next video. Until then, bye.